David, sad to say that there were a lot of articles that were going the other direction. Amen. They were justifying their lifestyle because of the love that Jonathan and David had. Amen. And I was sadly disappointed to see how they can twist uh, certain scriptures to, to make it okay for their lifestyle. Right. Amen. Amen. But God, in the beginning, created Adam and Eve, right. not Adam and Steve. That's right. Amen. Amen. So we, we, sometimes when, we, uh, when we're when not sure about the decisions we make, we need to go to the Word of God. We need to uh, uh, try the heart of God and to see His original design for mankind. Amen. And and we are living in, in a decadent society that is going to take people like you and I to give them the word of God. Amen. Because righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is reproach to what? Amen. Any people. Amen. Amen. So we know that brothers. And brothers, when I think of brothers, I think of friendship. I think of friendship. I think of friends. I think of, um, as the world say, partners. Uh, uh, being able to go through various things. But the first thing I want to talk about is brothers put God first. Amen. Brothers put God first. And we're going to come out of 1 Samuel chapter 18. Since we're talking, there's an emphasis on the love that David had for Jonathan. Amen. It's 1 Samuel chapter 1 Samuel 18. The scripture says, and it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking of the soul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him in that day. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Verse 3, then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Now, if you notice, any time that God says something twice, we need to take notice of. Anything that God says twice, we need to take a notice of. What is it to have a friend? God gives us this great example of what it means to be a friend or to have a brother. Amen. The first foundational principle of their friendship is that they both put their trust in God. They made a covenant before God. They made a covenant before God. Amen. It's important for us when we, and here's the thing, you're not going to find friendship in everyone. Everyone that says, hey, what's up, bro? It's not your brother. That's right. Because, see, <laughs> they may be saying, what's up, bro? But at the same time, you know, at your house, still your TV, mm -hmm. you know. So just because they look like you or they sound like you does not necessarily mean that they're in your camp. Uh -huh. Amen. But a, a true brother is going to have a, there's going to be a connection. It's going to be uh, something to identify with, a common cause, which is God himself, that we can latch on to, to make a covenant, to make an agreement, to know that, hey, I'm with you to the end. Uh, you are on your way to God's heaven, so am I. So what can we do to help each other, not pull each other down? And that's another uh, point that I'm going to talk about. But how can we aim and strengthen one another? How can we pray for one another? How can we encourage one another? Because we're all trying to get to the same place. We're all trying to attain uh, 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 the words from God himself, which is well done by good and what? Faithful servants. We're all trying to hear that. Amen. So friends, brothers, put God first. Romans 12 says, be kind and affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor and preferring, preferring one another. <coughs> Nothing in this world, number two, can come between brothers. Nothing in 
this world. The second principle is that they were loyal. David and Jonathan were loyal to each other, not letting anything come between them. This is the purpose Jonathan gave David his clothes. The robe represents position, authority, and standing. Jonathan's sword and bow represent the power and the strength of the king's son. Amen. Amen. They, amen. There was, there was a sharing. God bless you, brother. Amen. They shared. There was a sharing among each other the things that were precious to them. So brothers don't mind allowing that if, if, if your brother's in need and, and, and he said, can I borrow $10? If you had $10, you don't own it to him. You give it to him. That's a brother. That's a brother. And, and I, I, I personally don't like loaning money. I don't. But if I have to give it, I will give it. Because sometimes when you give loan money, <laughs> you just might not get it back. How I many of you been there? You just might not get it back. And every time you see that person, every time you see that person, you give for that $10. <laughs> so it's best to give it. It's best to give it. I gotta move on. Watch my time here, because I. One of the, my, my father was a Holy Ghost still preacher. And my father did not, he did not know how to tell time. <laughs> I said to myself, Lord, if you ever call me to preach, at least allow me to know how to watch the clock. To see his, you know, towards the end. One more minute. I'm almost done. <laughs> one more minute. One more thing. I said, I kept going. So I thank God. Okay, number three. Brothers, stand up for one another. Amen. When the, the time came when Saul spake to Jonathan's son and to all certain that they should kill David. And Jonathan was the one that came to his father and, and to say, what is this that, that, that David has done? What is it that David has done? And see, there will be times when people are going to try to kill your, your, your reputation. People are going to try to kill Amen. The things that you're trying to do as a father, as a husband, the things that you're trying to do as a community leader, they're going to try to kill your dreams. And it's going to take someone in your life to be able to, amen, sometimes, because here's the thing, we're not going to be able to shake off the haters all by ourselves. But sometimes it's good to have someone in your corner that's able to speak for you. Someone that's in your corner that's able to pray for you. Someone that's in your corner that's able to, amen, yeah. to speak on your behalf. Because here's the thing. Even when we're, we're right, it's not good for us to open our mouths to, to speak for ourselves. But when we have someone in our corner that can speak the truth for us, that means a whole lot. That means that person, amen, is willing to, amen, go the extra mile on your behalf because they see what you're trying to do. They see that you're trying to accomplish more than your own personal agenda, but there's a bigger picture involved, that you're trying to, amen, amen, to raise up a community, that you're trying to do great things for the things of God. So friends are going to, amen, protect and Amen. Speak up when they see someone is out to uh, assassinate your your character. Amen. A true friend is going to speak up. A true friend is going to defend. Now, everyone, there's some folks, I'm sorry, their life is ragged. Most kind of people's heart, it's hard to defend. But when you have someone who's doing the right thing, that's trying to make an improvement in society. Amen. That person is the person that you need to, amen. Uh, the Bible says, mark the perfect man. That is the person that you need to, amen, take notice of and, and, and to push, push that individual. Amen. Pray for that individual. Amen. Now, I'm going to say this. Now, because you do the right things, because you're living right, because you because you come to this man's prayer breakfast, don't think that the enemy is going to stop. Just lay down and die. That means he's going to, because the Bible says that a, a righteous man, 